Hey guys, Mitko here from DN Models and today we are reviewing Iwata High Performance High Precision High Detail Work Airbrush called HPCP or HPC Plus. This is very well known tune and widely used among modelers. It's very widely available also and as you can see the box contains HPC plus version. There are three more A, B and SB models. They are all high performance series and plus series are continuation of the standard HP high performance series from Iwata. As you can see the airbrush of our attention today is 0.3 needle. There are options with 0.2 0.4. They are all different in terms of their cup. There are side feet, there are smaller cups and there are bottom feet options. And as you can guess they come from 0.2 to 0.4 needle nozzle combo and they are interchangeable. Our item of interest looks like this. There is an airbrush inside, a wrench for the nozzle and a cap. There is also a small leaflet of a test example of this particular airbrush. We have also the cup. As you can see, this one is unopened because this is my second Iwata, which I haven't used. As you can see, pretty neat looking gun and you can tell the quality is very high. Otherwise, the airbrush looks like pretty much almost every airbrush out in the market, but the hidden secret here is in the quality and the performance of this particular airbrush. What I would like to focus on today is the whole tool itself in general. The gun is a bit heavier than the counterparts in the market and it's slightly longer than them. This for me works very well. It has the Familiar features as a stop on the trigger and the tail. The other very distinctive thing is the cup from inside. You can see that it has some sort of a satin coating, which helps. The trigger is a bit stiff, especially compared to harder in stand back, but I prefer it that way. There is a corrugation on top of it for better grip and in general sits very well in your hand. I do prefer heavy triggers just because I feel more in control. If you have a steady hand, not like me, you might prefer harder and stand back triggers which are light as a feather, however this one suits me better. The needle screw in the rear part it's open and the whole thing can be unscrewed without unscrewing the tail of the airbrush. Disassembling everything is quite an easy job and does not require a lot of knowledge, just a little bit of practice now and then. The needle cap is solid and it's closed from all the sides not like on the harder and stand back which makes it safer for the needle and easier to dilute the paint closing it with your finger without that you might damage the tip of the needle itself. I won't unscrew the nozzle today because I avoid doing that very often. In this particular case this isn't used and I don't need to risk damaging the thread of the nozzle or damaging the opening in the process of disassembling and assembling back. Just for your information in case you want to disassemble the nozzle it's advisable to use the wrench that Devata provides you. The nozzle is the most delicate part of the airbrush followed with the tip of the needle so you gotta be very careful while working on them. While assembling everything back you gotta be also as much careful as when disassembling because this is when most of the damages on the airbrush happens. There are of course spare parts available, however it's not advisable to spend large amounts of money maintaining an airbrush when in the same time you can apply more care and be more caution while doing this. Damaging the nozzle eventually can cause additional damage to the needle, bending it which prevents the straightforward painting process. It is also advisable to loop everything before assembling with Tamiya's lubricant. The stopper on the tail is something very useful, especially for those who are doing modeling or 
do not want to exceed the amount of paint preset. As you can see from the open part of the tail, it stops the whole movement of the trigger. And although I almost never use that, I advise you to try it on if you haven't yet. The free movement of the trigger is something very nice. However, sometimes it can cause you troubles, especially with highly diluted paints. The grip of the trigger, it's wonderful. However, sometimes stuff happens and you gotta be careful. Caution is never a trouble while spray through airbrush. Again, if you lubricate everything, supposedly with the Mia lubricant or any decent substitute, you'll have no troubles with the movement or grip or trigger malfunctions, which happens if you do not maintain your airbrush properly. So as I've said, this is a Japanese airbrush. I ordered mine from Japan directly. If you get yours from US or Europe, you might see some slight differences in the lettering especially, but it will be nothing major. The high quality of the airbrush makes it a pretty much a fingerprint magnet. Yet again, if you maintain it, you'll clean it and you'll have no troubles with that. The HPC Plus is a elevation of the HPC series. As you can see here it says Japan RL. RL it's the batch number and they are quite different. You might get all kinds of lettering of yours. If you want to see this particular rush into work, not this example, but the twin, you might check my comparison video between a cheap Chinese air rush and this type of Iwata. The other thing I want to show you, it's the piece of paper that is supplied with the box. It shows pretty much how this particular gun sprays. As I mentioned before, this is done by some expert in Iwata right after assembling the whole thing and before putting it onto the market. As you can see, the detail is very fine. Freehand camouflage schemes are an easy job for an expert airbrusher. This one, as I said, I find it very well sitting in the hand and I find the weight of it and the trigger pressure needed the perfect one for me. Everything is natural. It seems like a heavier pen. Also, the distance from your index finger to the where paint is supposed to strike the model, it's almost perfect for me. Pretty much nothing bad to say about this particular airbrush from Iwata. So let's talk about the cup a little bit. This is a gravity feed airbrush and I believe this is a 7cc cup which is the largest one available on the gravity feed one. I prefer those because bottom feeders are, are all designed and this one I feel better balanced with it. It's big enough to complete 35th scale large tanks and even large aircraft in 32nd scale with one go. I almost never fill the cup to the top. The advantage of the bigger cup is also having a space to fill a lot, a lot of cleaner detergent. So in two goes, you can pretty much clean off everything that it's accumulated on the sides while spraying. The other thing to know is that usually when you spray for very very fine details it's advisable to remove the cup. This promises higher precision however creates additional risk for the needle top and if you're not experienced I do not advise you to do that. This is one of the most usual reasons for damaging your needle even if you do not clean your airbrush. Keep your cup there if you're not sure what you're doing. The fitting to the hose, it's the standard one, not like on the Pache or Badger. And you might have some troubles finding the right hose or you might need additional transition fittings. I believe the size is one quarter of an inch with this case. The cap of the airbrush sits pretty well. I'm not sure it has a magnet inside of it. I've heard that some of them do, but anyhow, it's a challenge to remove it while spraying, so it is very well designed. As I've said, spare parts are not trouble to be found, especially for Iwata items. And as you might guess, there are Chinese substitutes for those available on eBay for half or even less the amount that Iwata asking for their genuine parts. Other thing to know, it's the usual pressure that I'm using. It's around 16 to 24 PSI for a spray session and 25 to 30, sometimes 32 PSI for cleaning session. Their brush holds up pretty well. None 
issue so far and I've even experimented once with 37 PSI, nothing happened. In either case, higher PSI, it's used only for cleaning and I usually use low PSI with highly diluted acrylics. A good thing to know is that some sellers, especially in the UK, provide longer warranty if you do not disassemble your airbrush but just clean it through with detergent. I believe that the TR series offer 10 year warranty if you're maintaining your airbrush that way. The truth is that if you're maintaining your airbrush well enough, you don't need the warranty because I haven't heard of a faulty Iwata so far. What usually happens is people damage their airbrushes while cleaning them and they try to pass that through warranty section but this isn't working. So as I've said if you maintain your airbrush properly you'll most likely won't even need the warranty. I personally advise to make your cleaning more with cleaning detergent spraying at higher pressure rather than to disassemble airbrush more often and it's usually one thing or another but if you do both well balanced in between them like three to one three cleaning expressions with the detergent and one disassembling the airbrush you'll pretty much be safe the thing is to use a bit higher pressure to help the whole thing to be cleaned from the natural processes inside rather to rub it with the cloth or cotton or whatever you're using for cleaning. Maybe it's a good idea to show you the troubleshooting guide that it's noted in their instruction sheet. However, I haven't encountered any of these troubles while using this airbrush and I doubt that you'll too. I believe that cleaning it regularly is the cause for that. Price wise this is more expensive gun compared to the Pasha or Badger. However it's a bit of higher quality compared to them. Although if you're a master you won't note any significant differences. It's coming from Japan and I'm pretty certain that Japanese are the most devoted people on the planet when it comes down to detail and precision work. If you want to stay in between prices and between Badger and Harder and Standback, eventually you will go for this particular airbrush. There are other cheap airbrushes which are old designs and they work very well too. However, to be sure that you have spare parts and you have availability in the stores and all of these things, again, I would suggest to go with that Iwata. If you're ready to spend between 140 and 220 US dollars for it, wherever on the planet you are, those are the prices, this HPC Plus is the gun to go with. So that was my opinion of that airbrush. I hope it helps. Check out the video showing how it holds up to the Chinese counterpart. Hit the like button if you enjoyed that one. Subscribe and see you in the next one.